Hi, I'm Nick, an MCAT teacher and content creator here at Kaplan. In this video, Kevin, one of our expert instructors, will walk you through one of the toughest passages that we've identified from Kaplan's free MCAT practice test. This test was designed by Kaplan's question writers and validated by our psychometrics team to be as representative as possible to what you're going to see on test day so that you're ready for the actual MCAT. In particular, this passage is from the psych -so section and focuses on memory and the serial position effect. Follow along as Kevin breaks down the passage and questions using Kaplan's passage and question strategy. The first thing I notice as I preview this passage is the acronym LGBTQ stands out, as well as the lack of any figures, graphs, or data. Because of this, I know it isn't going to be an experimental passage, and it most likely is going to lean towards the sociology side of the behavioral sciences. Many times, these types of passages read similarly to a car's passage, in that you'll be noting main ideas and evidence as you read, as well as any claims, pros and cons, etc. The first sentence here introduces us to the topic, but the second is what the passage is really going to be about, discrimination against LGBTQ plus students. The remainder of paragraph one simply describes the type of discrimination seen and by whom, as well as the example of such discrimination. I mentioned earlier that these often read like cars passages, and this reminds me of the passage archetype where a topic or a problem is introduced, we're told why and how it's a problem, and then provided several potential solutions or alternatives to that. The next paragraph should provide a little more insight on if this passage will meet my expectations or if it'll surprise me. Either way, it allows me to read with a more active mindset. Now, the extent of discrimination varies by demographics and location, citing differences in state policies and legislation as examples and evidence to support that. And the second half cites evidence of studies that show the divide exists not only among various states, but also among different schools, and how over 150 different private colleges have already applied for exemptions from Title IX protections and other examples of discrimination against the LGBT population. The third paragraph cites studies that focus more on the effects of this discrimination by schools and state legislation, documenting that transgender and intersex students often face worse discrimination, but all LGBT note poorer healthcare and educational outcomes as a result of discrimination. Now again, if we're keeping the passage archetype in mind, we've seen how discrimination is a problem, and been provided evidence of its effects, now I would predict that the final paragraph is going to show efforts to resolve this issue or maybe potential solutions to some of these problems that have been described already. And that's exactly what we see in the first sentence here. Not only is there legislation and policies in place, but several other avenues aimed at ameliorating the effects of discrimination, like school support services, LGBT content being added to the curriculum, and employing more LGBTQ faculty and forming student organizations. And of course, the opposition keyword, however, signifies the solutions might not be as great in practice as they are in theory. Passages that present us with several challenges and solutions or attempt to refute multiple different points tend to be a good site to pick questions from. Questions like, which one has the most support? Or, what claim was made but not supported with evidence? Etc. Now, I know these questions tend to be more often seen in a car's passage, but the main idea here still applies to behavioral sciences, and I'm willing to bet that there will be questions about these potential solutions and or the challenges that are faced by them. And of course, following the sentence about challenges is a supporting example. Both teachers and students are subject to bias and discrimination in their employment, as well as from student evaluations. It is an unavoidable fact of standardized tests some questions require you to just know and apply vocabulary and definitions. This is one of them. It's a pseudo discrete question since it does not require passage info and can simply be rephrased as why would women perform worse if they know it is a math test when the test itself is still the same? The poor performance of women on a test after being told it assesses math skills fits the negative stereotype that men are better with math than women. Now, while obviously untrue since sex does not affect cognitive ability, it may still hold some weight amongst women that fear perpetuating this stereotype. When members of a group feel apprehensive about possibly reinforcing a negative stereotype about their group, it can negatively affect their performance in such a way that they ironically conform to that stereotype. This is known as stereotype threat, and this math test scenario is a classic example of stereotype threat in action. Now, while the right 
answer was matched based on a prediction, a good habit is still to review each wrong answer choice during your review step, defining the term, and then seeing if you can relate it to an example that works for you. Prejudice that is deeply embedded into a society or organization structure, rules, or practices is known as endemic prejudice. And while stereotypes about women and men's math skills may contribute to a prejudice, there is a more narrow, more specific definition that fits into that scenario. A sexual dimorphism in cognition refers to any biological difference in mental skills between males and females. Even if this was something that existed, the question does not compare men to women's performance directly. And lastly, fundamental attribution error is the tendency for people to attribute other people's actions to a personal internal factor, known as a dispositional attribution, rather than to more situational factors. There's no judgment being made in this scenario, so fundamental attribution error does not apply. Assumptions are statements accepted as true, for another thing to also be true. In other words, which of the following statements would support a proposal from paragraph 4? Now, the final paragraph lists several proposed solutions to ameliorate the effects of discrimination against LGBTQ students. These include school support services, addition of LGBT content in curriculums, employment of more LGBTQ staff, and LGBT student organizations. The answer requires us to sift through each statement and evaluate whether its truth would support one of these proposals. To that end, it's very similar to a strength and weaken question type we'd see in a car section, and a process of elimination is going to be my plan of attack here. Let's look first at A. Laws cannot eliminate prejudice entirely, which is why there are several other proposed solutions to help mitigate it, and it's not relying solely on this anti-bias discrimination. Additionally, this statement would weaken the proposals for anti-bias laws, not necessarily support it. For answer choice B, the second half of paragraph 4 does mention the bias in student evaluations, but of the proposals mentioned in paragraph 4, school support services, LGBT content and curriculum, employing more faculty, having more active student organizations, none of them are aimed at combating bias in the student evaluation forms. Choice C mentions the college curriculum defining deviance, which is out of scope and just, as such, can be eliminated. That leaves D as the correct answer. One of the proposals mentioned is hiring more LGBT faculty and staff. Now, if the instructors are a reference group for the students, and those students presumably see the instructors as authority, role models, symbols of achievement and success, and more of those instructors identify as LGBTQ+, then it should help to ameliorate effects of discrimination against other LGBT students. Healthcare outcomes was mentioned at the end of paragraph three, which simply stated that transgender and intersex students face worse discrimination and more severe consequences, which include significantly poorer healthcare and educational outcomes. Now the author didn't expand a whole lot on this, and where one can get into trouble with a question like this is if you think too much about it. The information was limited, so keep the prediction simple and in line with what was stated in the passage. The only answer that relates to a group being discriminated against is because of a negative social stigma. This is an answer choice B. The other choices are out of scope with what was stated in the passage, but during review, it still helps to not only review their definitions, but also create a semantic link by using it in an example as well. Role ambiguity refers to the lack of clarity or ambiguity around the responsibilities and what is expected of a person trying to fill a new role. This is usually a formal role in like a workplace or some sort of similar social environment. Anime refers to a condition of instability as a result of a breakdown of social bonds, morals, and social or ethical standards within a group. And lastly, while mental illness may carry its own social stigma or may lead to some discrimination in certain situations, Mental illness is not what the passage suggests is the reason for poor healthcare outcomes for transgender and intersex students. It simply states that these students face discrimination. Questions that ask for a statement with the most support can either be obvious and easy or very time consuming as you have to analyze each statement. Ultimately, this is similar to a main idea question, and while it absolutely will help you to think about the main point or the overarching conclusion of the passage, it's also very helpful to glance at the answer choices before diving into a prediction. What we see is a parallel answer pattern. 
Choices A and C compare implicit bias to overt prejudice, while choices B and D simply mention discrimination. Now, I think it's fair to say that the passage was heavily focused on the negative effects of discrimination and potential solutions to combat this discrimination of LGBT students. So I'm already leaning towards B or D. A brief glance back at the passage shows me that implicit bias isn't even directly mentioned, and it certainly is not compared to overt prejudice or ranked based on which one is worse. So I can safely eliminate those. Now, choosing between B and D without passage reference could prove to be difficult. Generally speaking, it's rare for MCAT passages to rank things or create a hierarchy of best to worst. So when answer choices call out that X is worse than Y or that Z is the best thing, it should raise a red flag in your mind. This is especially true in CARS passages and a little less so in experimental passages that have hard evidence to back up which treatment must be the most effective. But this passage was written similar to a CARS passage, so I think it's fair that this rule will apply. Based on that alone, D would be the better answer choice. But if you have time, go back to the passage to clear up any confusion. Paragraph 2 has some solid evidence to support the fact that discrimination is more of a social norm in some geographic areas. Aside from explicitly stating that discrimination varies by geography, the passage gives evidence that some states have legislation against it and others do not, while some schools even apply for exemption from that legislation. Where the discrimination is legally sanctioned, or at the very least, they don't have legislation against it, it is by definition more of an accepted social norm than where it is legally discouraged. And so D is the correct answer. The question asks about student evaluations and something that can be inferred regarding their effects. The second half of paragraph four contains the answer, so let's look there first. It states that teachers and students are subject to discrimination and can affect employment decisions, and that many of the student evaluations show prejudice against LGBT professors. Discrimination and bias that stems from society or an organization as a whole, whether intentional or not, is known as institutional bias. And since the passage states that overtly prejudice employment decisions and poorer ratings against LGBT professors, it supports the statements that there is an institutional discrimination against LGBT instructors. Choice C references unconscious bias, and while there is certainly some amount of conscious and unconscious bias at play here, the passage does not say which one is a bigger factor, which brings us back to something I mentioned earlier, that it's very rare for the MCAT to rank things in a hierarchy of best to worst or most to least. Choices B and D are an issue of vocabulary, Confirmation bias in B is about interpreting data or evidence in a manner that fits preconceived notions, but that issue was not being discussed in the passage. And similarly, in D, social desirability bias describes the tendency to answer questions in a way that will be viewed positively by others, which again, is also not discussed in the passage. <laughs> 